I definitely wanted to start out by talking about, I read something the other day that you guys have like 10 million YouTube views and your fans are just like outrageous. They are just so loyal. What does that mean to you guys? And it means everything. It's very rejuvenating every time we, you know, go to a show and see the people that, that do follow us around and new people, of course, but our, our fans are, they're like friends. I mean, they really are. They're, I hate even calling them fans because they just, they're so dedicated like that. They're friends. They're, yeah. They're friends. They're friends. They're friends. <laughs> But yeah, they're they're fantastic, man. They keep us doing what we do, and it's it's why we write our songs, and it's why we perform. Yeah, I just I saw that, and I'm like, that is that's pretty pretty amazing. You have quite a big following for sure. Yeah. Well, and also, I think Kendra from the Girls Next Door helped us a little bit on one of the videos. There, nobody's looking at her. They're looking no, at us. I'm looking at her. Yeah, she uh, the she. The whole video we're looking. At. She flew in from LA and did the C O U N T R Y video with us, and uh, that kind of just went bananas yeah. online. It was awesome. That is really cool. What was it like shooting that video? Was it a lot of fun? Uh, yeah, it was very muddy and uh, hot chick, mud, water, lots of hot chicks actually. Playboy. Playboy. Mix it all up. I'd say it's a pretty good time. Okay. Big trucks. Big tires. I like it. Let's do it again. You couldn't go wrong there, right? <laughs> now on a little more you know, serious note, I know you guys have your the best seat in the house. That is such an amazing song. Can you tell us a little bit about writing that song and where that came from? That one is definitely a personal experience. That's uh, blood, sweat, and tears on that one. Uh, my, my dad had passed away in 2011, and uh, it's one of the hardest things I've gone through in my life, and hopefully the hardest thing I ever go through. But, you know, I, I just I keep telling myself, you know, that's the way it's supposed to happen. And, you know, logically, you, you're going to lose your parents first. And, you know, God forbid anything ever happened the other way. But um, it just, you know, it, it touched our lives, and came up with this idea Preston did we were on the Grand Ole Opry stage and I'm pointing up my dad's dream was to see me on the Opry so I'm pointing up singing a song called keep in mind trying to hold it together I feel my dad my backbone kicking me in the you know what and then uh, Preston said man I had a vision when you were up there I, he was playing the piano and he said I feel like your dad's got the best seat in the house so when he said that we, li we literally looked at each other and said I think dad just gave us a title for a song and it's it's amazing. I mean, it we put it in there. It was hard to write, but it, you know, it's such a cool thing that we took such a horrible accident to a beautiful thing in memory. You know, memory of my dad. But anybody that's lost somebody in your life, you're going to relate to this song. Yeah. And we just hope that they have the best seat in the house. Yeah, it's awesome. And I bet you have gotten like a lot of outpouring from fans about how that has touched them. Have you guys? Yeah, so many stories, emails, letters. Sometimes they're just like taped to our bus. You know, we come off stage one night and there was a letter folded up and just handwritten in pencil and uh, you know you'll never see it online you'll never hear about it on the radio but it, the story was such an impact you know with with best seat in the house and this little girl who lost her dad and uh, she wrote a little note to us and stuck it on the bus door and that's why you know we write the songs that we write and, uh, and that's why we picked that song because uh, yeah we're all shooting for the charts and we all want a number one and we want all these self-gratifying goals, but at the end of the day, you get a note like that, a little letter that, that changed that little girl's life, you know, and helped her move past it a little bit. That's, that's the bigger picture, you know, and that's what it's all about. Definitely. You know, you're making a difference and people, you know, your work is affecting other people in like a profound way, you know, definitely. And I know, you know, you guys have your songs that you perform and stuff, but you guys are also the pin behind a lot of amazing, amazing songs, right? Like Truck Yeah and... I'm gonna fly, uh, yeah. you're gonna fly, yeah. And what is the difference between writing a song for someone else and writing a song for yourself that you know you're gonna perform? Or is there a difference? I mean, there is a difference. It's, it's, it's still kind of like your baby, your creation. And uh, if you have a big artist like Urban or McGraw, the guys you do not turn down <laughs> to record your stuff. And they're so humble and they were so good to us. And uh, we're blessed to even, they wanted to hear our stuff and really record it and then go number one with it. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, I would like to write our own too, which we're trying to. That's our kind of our goal in 2014. But uh, I will never complain because I do like writing our music. Just sitting down and writing, if someone like that wants to cut it, and it's just an honor. It yeah. still feels the same when you hear it on the radio. Right, because it came from you, you know, definitely. And now, do you guys always write together? I mean, is that something Not that you always. guys? Do? Not always. We just, uh, you know, Chris has a family, uh, a wife and a little boy, and he spends a lot of, you know, we're on the road a lot. So when we get home. Uh, he spent some time there at home and um, I'm still you know not married and so I have a little bit of a crazy 
other life, you know, where I'm, I just, I just dive into being busy with music a lot, you know, and, uh, and we both have home studios and, you know, you're just always kind of writing all the time. And so, um, you know, sometimes there's a piano at my place. Sometimes I'll write a song all by myself, you know, and, um, and at sometimes he probably won't ever hear those songs. Nobody will, you know, I just, you know. Especially if I didn't write them, I don't want to hear right. them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. Just but, kidding. you know, just sitting around, you know, but we're getting cuts on all kinds of albums right now, and things are good, and uh, try not to mess with it too much. You know, if it's working, it's working, and uh, just keep on writing better songs. You know, somebody asked us what our goal was for 2014, and I, they said your top three goals, and I was just like, just write better songs, write better songs, and write better Just keep trying to find a way to tweak out the best song that you could ever write, and I don't know that we ever will, but I guess, you know, that's something Jeffrey Steele taught us, you know, to just always hone in on trying to make every line a home run, and that's what we do. That's awesome, and I've always, a little off topic, but I've always wanted to ask you guys, how did you guys meet and start working together? We were uh, strippers, it was Trip Club. Deja Vu. Yeah, Deja Vu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, we met your husband there. He uh, <laughs> he uh, was uh, he was dancing that night, oh, okay. and uh, it, it took pretty, us by it surprise. Gross, we were like, "Wait, I thought we were the only two guy dancers there." Yeah, okay. uh, but no. So yeah, if you look outside, it says uh, hundreds of beautiful girls and three ugly ones. We were the three ugly ones. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. us, right? Yeah. Now, how did you meet your husband? <laughs> I want to know where you were. <laughs> No, we were at the Wild Horse Saloon uh, yeah. down on 2nd Avenue here in Nashville, and uh, Chris hired me. Uh, he was the DJ and oh, okay. did not have authority to hire me, but he did. But I did. And uh, so I started working. I had a great hourly rate that Chris promised me that I never received. And uh, He did receive. <laughs> he no. did. You did, did get all that money. You no, got all that money. Yes, you no. did. I tried. I got a portion of it. Um, but uh, he hired me, and we hit it off, and we started singing. We started writing, and... Uh, here we are all these years later, you know, it's a crazy journey. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think you guys are a great team. A lot of great stuff comes out. Uh, and then your most recent album that came out on Average Joe's, what would you say on that album were you guys most, like, was most different for you guys or you were most looking forward to getting out to the fans, like something on there that you were just like, I can't wait for the fans to hear? I think I think it's about every every song on there. I mean, we were just happy to get album, it. Period. Yeah, this, album it's period. It's actually, you said our latest album, but it's actually our only album. Yeah. We've never had a real album come out on a record label. And so that was a big deal for us. You know, just the album. debut. We needed yeah. to get that off our chest, you know, get that yeah. monkey off our off our back. And you know? yeah, friends of ours got like their third album. We're like still in our first. And we're like, whoa, hold on. I know. So, I but know, yeah, we could crazy. not wait to get that out. Yeah, awesome. Well, it was a big year for you guys, definitely. And, with songwriting and being performers, who is someone that you would love to cut one of your songs and who is someone that you would love to sing with someday? Like if you guys ever had like a, you know, a third person to your, you know, just for a song, who's someone you'd love to perform with and someone you'd love to write with, basically? Well, it almost happened a few days ago. Um, I don't want to jinx it because it might still happen, but there's an R&B group that wanted to cut a song with us and we didn't do it. Um, just because of scheduling and timing and stuff like that, but um, it might still happen. So okay. keep your eyes peeled out because our dream Same artist might be on there. Uh, so well, just every time say we say it, it just boys to men. Whoa. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're <laughs> we're hoping it, you know, still comes through. So okay. it'd be cool. And cutting the song and maybe touring with would be Garth Brooks. Oh, uh, man, that would be ridiculous, amazing, very cool. Which we wouldn't mind Taylor Swift, Carrie Underwood, Keith Urban, Tim McGraw. But, you know, anyway. <laughs> but oh, Garth would be nice. Luke Bryan. Luke, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck with the, the voice of anything. That would be really, really cool. Be cool. Yeah, definitely. And what is something that you would want your fans to know most about you guys? <clears throat> Man, just I think that we're just down to earth. And we just love to have a good time. And uh, we have a sensitive side. And, um it, real, it really it really it really just boils down to the music for us and and we appreciate everybody who uh, buys or downloads one song I mean that's you know that's why we do what we do we're very and, uh, fan oriented with Twitter and Facebook and we love reading stuff you know good or bad whatever <laughs> you know but we love reading it some of it makes us laugh but you know it, it's just they're just great to us and you know want to know we are just normal guys that's it yeah and with 2014 kind of just getting rolling, what is on the books for you guys? You guys going to be touring? What should we be looking for? 
man, everything that we've been doing plus right. more. I don't think know? we've ever stopped touring. Yeah. But, we'll uh, still do about 200 shows this year and wow. uh, all over the country. We just went to Switzerland oh, really? and uh, played a couple sold-out shows. So that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of become a tradition for us. So hopefully we'll g get to go back again next year. And hopefully we'll learn some more languages. We only learn like little bad words. And we only and we and we learn the words like right at dinner, right before the show. Right. <laughs> so it's like we're so rusty, but uh, it works. The crowd loves it when we say like a certain phrase. They all cheer and we're like, yeah, you yeah, know. Like the interpreter on the iPhone, we're like saying it wrong, and then they're all you know when it's wrong because they're all like, oh. <laughs> And, like, and then you try again, and they're right. still like, oh. And then the third time, they're like, yay. <laughs> like, and they're just so proud of you that you finally right. got it. You're speaking right. their language.